Hello and welcome back. My name is Nate. I own the website M Catalyst. Today I'm going to be releasing the first of a series of videos that I'm basically just trying to make MCAT math easier for you. Definitely recommend checking out any of my other videos or my website. If you're looking for any other MCAT resources, I release a whole bunch of free resources on my website that you can always check out. If you're also looking for MCAT tutoring, I have a whole bunch of verified and vetted tutors that you can go through and pick through to find an independent tutor that's right for you. But just to start actually getting into this, we're going to split this into four different sections and videos. This first one is going to be just my general math tip about how to use scientific notation to your advantage. There's a fantastic video by Science Simplified that pretty much uses a very similar strategy. This is a really common way to do mental math on the MCAT. I just have one specific step that I typically add in, especially when using division for scientific notation that will hopefully make it even easier. There'll be a few other videos, including one that talks about how to deal with logs. In fact, you don't really need to even know how to resolve a log. We'll talk about that in a separate video. Another video that basically demonstrates why and how units are important because that's going to allow you to start manipulating equations and things of that sort. And then finally, basically how to make stoichiometry more simple by using moles as a focal point. So like I said, today we're going to be mainly talking about scientific notation. And in order to do so, we need to talk about the different rules of exponents, because of course scientific notation has exponents that we're going to be doing some math with. So whenever you're multiplying, you always have to add the exponents together. You don't touch the base of 10 at all, you just add the exponents together. Whenever you're doing division of scientific notation and exponents, you're going to subtract the exponents from each other. Notice that the only thing we're basically doing to solve this is just subtracting B from A. The next two things are not really likely to show up on your MCAT, but I figured I might as well just cover them here. When you're raising an exponent to a power, like squaring a number, squaring scientific notation, which again is not likely to show up, all you have to do is just multiply the exponents together. And then when you're going the opposite direction, when you're doing some sort of root, like a square root or a cube root, you're just going to divide the exponents. So notice that if you're taking the B root of 10 to the power of A, you're just going to do 10 to the power of A divided by B. Again, those last two are not really likely to show up, but just for the sake of holistically covering everything, I figured I might as well mention it here. So two other things that are really important to note when we're talking about scientific notation, because we are going to be moving decimals in certain directions. Anytime you move the decimal to the right, the exponent is going to become more negative or decrease. I'm usually going to say more negative because if the exponent is like negative seven, it's kind of confusing. If I say that exponent decreases, you don't really know what direction that goes. So just to eliminate any double negatives, when decimals are moved to the right, they become more negative. And when they move to the left, the exponent is going to become more positive. That's going to make more sense whenever we actually look through an example. So now as far as actually multiplying different bits of scientific notation together, there's some basic steps that we're going to go through in an example that eventually are just going to become second nature to you. They're pretty self-explanatory. They're really easy. It's not like this is some crazy process that you're going to have to memorize. But basically, the first thing that I recommend doing is that if the numbers that you're going to be doing math with are not simple, I recommend putting everything into proper scientific notation and into the standard units as well. So if there's one of those prefixes like nano or micro, we need to get rid of that. The second step is that if necessary, feel free to make small little rounds to the coefficients as well. The coefficient is the number out front of the scientific notation. So for example, if it's like 6.7, totally fine to round that up to seven, but I would not recommend rounding six up to 10 or something like that. Just make small rounds basically to the nearest whole number. Then you're going to split the coefficient away from the exponent portion of the scientific notation. And you're simply going to multiply the coefficients together. And then all you have to do with the exponents is add them together since we're multiplying. Then finally, all we have to do is put everything back together and just make sure that it's in proper scientific notation and make sure that it's answering the right format that the answer choices are listed in. Again, I know this sounds like a lot, but I promise with this example, it's going to be really easy to see what I'm trying to get at here. So now to just put an actual example in front of your face, I'm going to keep all of those steps that we just talked about on the last slide. Again, make sure you know the exponent rules that we talked about two slides before. But basically, we're just going to use this example problem to explain why scientific notation can help you with a lot of this mental math you need to do on the MCAT. So in this problem, they're basically asking us to solve for the velocity of the wave. 
that's often the thing that I first start off with trying to figure out is what exactly are they looking for? They're looking for velocity, which is measured in meters per second. This question also gives us that the wavelength is 375 nanometers. The frequency is also given, and that is equal to eight times 10 to the 14th hertz. So if you have a pretty good understanding of the equations, you'd probably get that this is a pretty easy question. We're just solving V is equal to lambda times F. So now we can get into solving the problem pretty simply. So I plug everything into the equation that we're looking for. V is equal to lambda times F, which is equal to 375 nanometers times eight times 10 to the 14th power hertz. But again, in this first step, we are trying to put everything into proper scientific notation and standard units. So the frequency is already there. We don't have to touch the frequency at all, but we are gonna have to do a little bit of work with the wavelength. So first things first, let me put it into standard units. Let me get rid of that nano. And basically I can just replace that nano with 10 to the negative ninth power. So 375 nanometers is equal to 375 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. That's what nano means. Okay, now we have it in standard units, but we need to convert this to scientific notation, proper scientific notation, I should say. We need to get this coefficient somewhere between one and 10. So in order to do so, we're gonna move this decimal to the left, not once, but twice. And remember, whenever we move the decimal to the left, we are going to make the exponent more positive. We're gonna increase this, make it more positive by two. So to write this in proper scientific notation, it's 3.75 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. From here, we can move on to step two. We don't need to round eight to anything. So again, we're not really gonna to touch the frequency, but we can also round this coefficient in the wavelength up to four. So now our equation basically states that we have four times 10 to the negative seventh meters times the frequency, which is eight times 10 to the 14th Hertz is gonna be equal to the velocity that we're looking for. So now in step three, all we have to do is just take these two coefficients, four and eight, and multiply them together to get 32. We're gonna just put that in our back pocket for a second. So now we can move on to step four that we're gonna do something similar, but with the exponent scientific notation stuff. I don't really know what to call it. So we have 10 to the negative seventh meters times 10 to the 14th hertz. So remember all we're gonna do here, we don't even touch the 10, the 10 is gonna stay the same, but all we have to do is just add the two exponents. So negative seven plus 14, which is equal to 10 to the power of seven. So now then all we have to do in step five is just put those two things together, 32 times 10 to the seventh power. And then finally, just make sure that it's in proper scientific notation or just whatever format the answer choices are in. So again, in order to get this to a number between one and 10, we're just gonna move this decimal place to the left once, which means that we're going to be making this number more positive, which means that our answer is 3.2 times 10 to the eighth power. So even though we rounded, since this is a multiple choice exam, there's going to be an answer choice that is significantly closer to this number than any of the other answer choices. So again, while it might seem like it's a lot of steps, these are steps that will start to become pretty intuitive and notice that the actual math that we're doing is very simple, just simple addition and some simple multiplication. Things tend to start getting a little bit confusing when we start getting into division though. So for the most part, a lot of the steps are gonna be pretty much the exact same, except we're gonna be doing division and subtraction instead of multiplication and addition. Where again, we're gonna be starting off with, if it's a number or series of numbers that we're not comfortable dividing pretty easily, we're first gonna put it into scientific notation and standard units. We can round those coefficients in that scientific notation if necessary to the closest whole number. And here's where the new step comes in. I wanna add that you can adjust the numerator to make the division more simple. That's gonna make more sense whenever we get to the next slide. From here, all you have to do is split up the coefficient from the scientific notation stuff, just divide the coefficients like you normally would, subtract the exponents from each other like you're supposed to, and then of course put everything back together and into the proper scientific notation if necessary. So just to kind of throw another similar example in front of you, 
Again, I put these steps on the right. You still want to memorize all of those exponent rules that you need to know, not necessarily the stuff with squaring and square roots and stuff like that, much more so the first two. But now in this question, notice that we're trying to solve for the wavelength. We are looking for the wavelength this time. We are given that the velocity is 0 0.15 times 10 to the ninth meters per second. And we are also given that the frequency is equal to 7.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So step one, step one is very similar. We're basically just going to be putting everything into proper scientific notation and standard units, especially because I'm not confident doing any sort of division between 0.15 and 7.5 in either direction. We're still going to be using that equation V is equal to lambda times F. Just now we're going to have to rearrange it. So that we're solving for the wavelength, which is going to be V divided by the frequency is equal to lambda. So additionally, we can just throw this velocity into proper scientific notation really quickly. It's already in base units meters per second, but for some reason they didn't give us proper scientific notation. So now notice we are going to be moving this decimal to the right this time. So since we're moving it to the right, this exponent is going to become more negative, closer in the negative direction, decreasing whatever word you want to use. So this is going to be equal to 1.5 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So now that we have everything in the proper unit and scientific notation, we're not really going to be doing any rounding here because we're already at 7.5 and 1.5. If we were to round those in either direction, that would maybe create some pretty significant rounding errors. You could maybe round the frequency up to eight if you really wanted to, but just for our purposes, I'm not going to. It's a little bit too big of a rounding error that we might be creating, especially if we round that 1.5. So we're not going to be doing any rounding. Sorry about that. But notice that if I basically write out what we have so far, Plugging all of these numbers into the equation, 1.5 times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by the frequency, which is 7.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. The next step would be to try to divide these coefficients, 1.5 divided by 7.5. That's something that I, in particular, am not really comfortable with. I could maybe get myself to some sort of fraction that maybe I could simplify or maybe kind of multiply them both by two until I get to a number that I'm comfortable with. But more specifically, my advice is usually to just move around the decimal place in this top number, the numerator, until you get to some sort of division that you're comfortable with. So maybe you're not comfortable with 1.5 divided by 7.5, but maybe you are comfortable with 15 divided by 7.5. So let's move this decimal to the right which means that this number is going to come down. So whenever we rewrite this equation, we have 15 times 10 to the seventh meters per second over 7.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So that now whenever we move on to step four, I am way more comfortable dividing 15 by 7.5 than I am 1.5 divided by 7.5. This is just going to be two. So I have my coefficient. I'm done with the coefficients. I can now move on to step five, which is where we're just going to be doing the subtraction of the exponents. So we have 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by 10 to the 14th hertz, which is just going to be equal to 10 to the power of eight minus 14, which is just the same thing as 10 to the negative sixth. So now when we put it together, we have two times 10 to the negative sixth. If you know the unit of wavelength, then you know that this is gonna be meters. Additionally, dividing meters per second by Hertz is just gonna cancel out the seconds and we'll be left with meters. But so you might be thinking this is the answer, which of course I'm hoping that you can see that we just made this math a lot easier, but I will note that the question is asking for the answer in nanometers. So remember that nanometers is 10 to the negative ninth meters. So basically all we have to do is we want to decrease this number by three. So that also means that we're gonna be moving this decimal place to the right by three as well, which is basically going to give us 2000 times 10 to the negative ninth meters, which is the same thing as saying 2000 nanometers. And that is our answer.
So I just made these numbers up. Like it's kind of weird to have an answer that's 2000 nanometers. But basically I'm hoping that especially that third step where whenever you're setting up this scientific notation division, just slide around that decimal in this top coefficient until you get to division that's really comfortable for you. So that step four is really easy. That's the main thing I recommend adjusting in your strategy to pretty much make all of the mental math that's gonna show up on the MCAT significantly easier. I think most people are okay with multiplying scientific notation and kind of getting things into scientific notation, but it's those crazy complex problems that we're having to do divisions with weird decimals and stuff like that, that things get tricky. So basically that's where I'm saying, put things into standard scientific notation, standard units, with the added step of just sliding around that decimal in the numerator to make that division in step four significantly easier. That's how I did my math on the MCAT. That's how I recommend all of my students that used to come through me whenever I was tutoring to do their math, just because I think it's significantly easier than trying to do any sort of long division or fraction simplification or something like that. And just as long as you're making sure that you're moving the decimal and exponents correctly, you're always going to get to the right answer. So just as a summary of what we've talked about today, I had to fix a typo really quickly, just to summarize everything that we talked through today. The first thing that I recommend doing is converting all math that you can't do simply in your head into scientific notation. Additionally, I recommend immediately converting things into their standard units. There are gonna be some times that the math is actually pretty simple or the answer choices are different enough that it doesn't matter that you convert things into their standard units, but still I recommend making a habit of it so that you never mess it up when it does show up and it is important to do. Again, you wanna make sure that you remember your exponent rules, especially those first two, as well as what we're doing with the decimal sliding and increasing or decreasing the exponent. You should definitely feel comfortable rounding and estimating within reason. That's gonna be your best friend on the MCAT. Like I said, it's usually okay to round numbers to the nearest whole number, unless doing so is a giant change in that number. So for example, rounding 1.5 up to two is like a 33% change in that number. That's a huge rounding error. Whereas rounding 9.2 down to nine is gonna be a much smaller error. So rounding within reason is gonna be your best friend. And then finally, my other bit of advice that I'm hoping is the biggest help from this video is that when you're dividing, move around that decimal in the numerator to find some sort of simple division that is way easier for your brain to handle. So that's it, that's the first video. I will be covering some other things in a series of other videos that I'll probably be releasing over the next few days. Like I mentioned, I'll be talking about how to make logarithm math easier in that you don't actually have to do it. We'll be talking about how to make units a little bit easier to digest and manipulate. And then finally, just my big tip of how to make stoichiometry a bit easier. So I definitely recommend subscribing if your heart so does desire. I recommend checking out my website for my other free resources and other things. I've got a whole bunch of tips about cars and other free resources, like a whole bunch of Anki decks that I have made to attack certain things. Or like I mentioned earlier, I also have a host of several verified independent MCAT tutors that if you do need some help outside of just watching videos, I recommend reaching out to them as well.